Hi everyone, welcome to my video explaining the use of the Bellman Ford algorithm for finding the shortest path from a starting node to all other nodes. We will start with a sample network diagram with six nodes and directional paths with different weightings. We now need to introduce a table to perform all of the calculations to find the best path. The table will have the same number of rows as there are nodes in the network. We also have one column for the length of the route to each node, as well as the path this route takes. To initialize the table, we are given two instructions. The first is that L0 of n is equal to infinity for all values of n where n is not equal to s. To break this down, let's start with the first segment. L0 of n just means that we're referring to the length of the route to each node n for the zeroth iteration, or h equals zero. We then make all of these root lengths equal to infinity. This provides us a starting point, as it guarantees that any root found will be shorter than the current root length in our table. The last part of the equation, for all n not equal to s, just means we're referring to all nodes that are not the starting node. As this table does not include an entry for the starting node, it just means we're filling this value in for every node in the table. The next equation we are given is LH of S equals zero for all H. Given that S refers to the starting node, we will in need to include it in this table temporarily to explain what this equation does. With our starting node as A, LH of S can be represented as LH of A, so we're referring to this new column. We then set this value to zero for every iteration of H, or, so every iteration or every value of H. To keep things simpler, we'll remove this column again, but just remember that the root length to A is always zero. We now need to start iterating through values of H, starting with zero. The first statement we are given is for each n not equal to S. This simply means we are performing this calculation for all nodes other than the starting node. Given we have not included the starting node in this table, it means we will apply to all nodes in the table. We're then given the equation LH plus one of N equals minimum J from J H of, sorry, from LH of J plus W of J and N. To explain this equation, let's look at the first node in our table as an example. The first section, LH plus one of N, means we are calculating the length of the root for the given node N for a value of H plus one. With node B and H equal to zero, it simply refers to the highlighted cell on the table, the length of the root for instance one of node B. To explain the next part, minimum J, we need to know what J represents. J simply means any node that's a predecessor to the node we're currently looking at. For node B, the only node that can feed into it is node A. So in this instance, the only possible value for J is node A. The minimum just means that we need to calculate all options for J and take the lowest resulting value. We will see an example of this later where we have multiple values of J to choose from. The next section, LH of J, refers to the length of the root L for the current predecessor node, J, which in this case is node A, and for the current value of H, which is node zero. Whilst this is not currently shown on the table, we know that the root length for A is always zero, so we can take that value. The next section of the equation is W of J and N. This refers to the weight or length of the root between our predecessor node J and the current node N. For the nodes A and B, this value is 10. We then add this value to the current value we have in our equation, and we have a root length of node B of 10. The path column is then filled in with the path this route has taken. In this case, the path taken is node A direct to node B. We now go on to our next node and the next cells of the table. Node C now has two possible predecessor nodes, or two values of J to calculate. We can see that for node B, the length of the root for instance zero is infinity. It is important to note that with the current value of H being zero, we're checking against the length of the root where h equals zero, 
not the value we have just got for b, where h equals 1 and the length is 10. Therefore, we can rule this node out, as it cannot give us a better value than we currently have, which is also infinity. When we perform the calculation with node a as the predecessor, we know that the root length for a is always 0. We can then see the root length from node a to node c is 13. So we calculate the root length for node c is 13, and the path taken is directly from node a to node c. Continuing on to node d, we can see the predecessors are nodes a and c. For the same reasons given with node c, we can see that the only viable predecessor is node a. Again, performing the same calculation, we can see that the current best path root length for node D is 21, and the path is directly from node A to node D. Continuing on to nodes E and F, we can see that their only predecessors, again, have infinite length roots. We can therefore carry the infinite values down from the previous row, as we have not yet found a better value. This concludes our calculations for H equals 0. We can now perform them again for H equals 1. Starting with node B, if we were to perform the calculation again, we would come out with the same value of 10, so this does not change. For node C, we have two predecessors, but this time we cannot instantly rule any of them out. Starting with node A, we can see the value comes out to the same as before. Currently, this is the best root length we have found. Performing the calculation for B, we can see the values we are working with are different to the values we've used before. With a previous path length of 10, and the length of the path from B to C of 12, we have a total root length of 22. As this length is not less than 13, we can ignore this root. We can now say the minimum result for all possible values of J is 13, and the root is directly from node A to node C. We now move on to node D again. For node D, we still have two predecessor nodes, and again, we cannot instantly rule any of them out. Starting with node A, performing the same calculation, we get the best current root of 21 and the path directly from node A to node D. Moving on to node C, we perform the given calculations again. In this case, the length of the root for our predecessor node, node C, where H equals 1, is 13. We now take the weight or length of the root from our predecessor node C to our current node D for this root the value is 6, so the total length of this root is 19. Again, we always want to take the minimum result for all values of j, so we can say that the shortest current root to node d is 19, and the path from node a through to node, through node c, finishing at node d. Continuing on to node e, we can see the possible values of j, or predecessors, are nodes b and c. Starting with node b, we take the value of the shortest root from the previous iteration, 10, and add it to the weight or length of the path from node B to node E, 18. This gives us a best root length of 28 and the paths A, B, E. Performing this calculation with node C as the predecessor, we can take the length of node C, the previous iteration, 13, and add it to the weight or length of the path from node C to node E, 10, this new total of 23 is lower than the previous best value of 28, so we take this minimum and set it as the new best length root to node E. We also update the path as well to the new path of ACE. To finish off this iteration, we work out the value for node F. Node F has two possible predecessors, nodes D and E. However, in the previous iteration, we still had a best root length of infinity for, road, for node E, so this predecessor can be ignored. We now perform this calculation for our only remaining predecessor, node D. With the best root length from the previous iteration of 21, and a root length from node D to node F of 19, we get the best current root length for F of 30, and the path this root takes of nodes A, D and F. This then finishes off our iteration where H equals 1. So we can continue on to iteration h equals 2. Starting again with node b, we get the same results as previous iterations. This also goes for node c, node d, and node e. 
With node f, we again have the predecessors nodes d and e. Starting with node d as our predecessor, we get the same values as the previous iteration. Continuing on to node e as the predecessor, we perform the calculation again. Because the best, previous best root length for node e is no longer infinity, we perform the calculations again and get a new minimum value of 26. This path takes the root from node A through node C, then node E, to finish at node F. This then finishes off the iteration for H equals 2. We now continue on to iteration H equals 3. If we were to perform the calculations all over again, we would come out with these values shown on the screen. You will notice that these values have not changed from the previous iteration. This indicates that we have reached the best possible path for all nodes. You may notice that we did not require the final row of our table. The reason we picked this number of rows is because we want to identify if the path ever gets stuck in a negatively weighted loop. However, given our weightings are all positive, and the directions of the path makes loops impossible, we knew this could not happen in this instance. We can discard this last row of the table and be left with the best path values and our working out. Thanks for taking the time to watch through this explanation of the Bellman-Ford algorithm. I hope it can help in your understanding of how this algorithm works. If you have any other topics you think I should also cover, leave a comment down below to let me know. Thanks for watching.